Hey Katgingas, Deva here with another exciting video. Today I will help you improve your hunting times, if not half them by just knowing the monster hits on values and using the right matchup weapon or element. I know a lot of people don't care about that and just play to enjoy the hunts or long combats which I totally do respect, but there is also people that would like to get faster hunts or are having some questions about how damage works. The first 6 months after getting the game, I myself was playing the game completely blindly till I started questioning some of my builds and why I get less damage on a monster even though it has the same weakness as another. How is it possible with way more elemental damage to still see smaller numbers and so on? For example, why do you do on Diablos 300 damage per ice file but barely 150 on Sinogre? Why does Hunter Node say Valhazak is the 3 star fire and dragon weak monster when it can take 0 damage on those elements? Hunter Nodes is the biggest lie ever and not reliable if you want accurate info on what weakness the monster has. I mean, even Capcom themselves sell the Monster Hunter guidebooks where you can find the real weakness aka hits on values for every single monster part and monster. Not sure why they didn't include those in the Hunter Nodes instead though? and selling them separately. Sounds like a pay to win game to me, nah I'm just kidding. Your damage is changing from monster to monster and part to part. You know you hit 2000 damage on the training pole with a true charge slash but not on an actual monster. So let me help you understand what hit zone values are and how incredibly and stupidly easy it is to read them off these sheets. Also how tenderizing affects them and why it makes parts with bad hit zones weak spots. You don't have to do any math but just knowing how high the number should be to do decent damage. So let's take as example a simple monster without much complication and overall good hit zones. You can see each part that is a hit zone right here. This means all these parts take different damage. The grid sword, hammer and bullet show all three different damage types in the game. Grid sword stands for seva hit zones. This applies for all cut weapons such as dual blades, grid swords, most attacks of shield and sword, glaive, switch axe, lance and so on. And basically anything that is not a blunt weapon. Shield and sword for example and grid sword have also moves that are blunt damage, for example the shoulder bash from grid sword which can build up KO. Seva type of damage is the only one that can cut off tails. The hammer stands for blunt hit zones, which is mostly hammer and hunting horn only. Any blunt type of attack does build up or have the possibility to cause a KO. Cut weapons will never ever do a KO. You notice hitting with those blunt type attacks that you can see kind of stars on the head of the monsters and hear the impact sound. Ammo type weapons are basically any ammo type like bow arrows and bowgun bullets that can crit. Stiggies, clusters, charge blade impact files or LBG mines and other stuff are explosive attacks which completely ignore hits on values and will do the same damage on all monsters with small changes which I will explain later. So now that you know this, let's say you're a grid sword player. All hit zones for every single part is listed below. Anything below 45 hit zone is bad because weakness exploit doesn't work there. This means you're not getting any affinity from weakness exploit if you hit the tail tip of Diablos or its legs. Anything above 45 is a really good hit zone. The higher the number, the more damage you will deal. It's just as simple as that. Training pole, for example, has maxed out hit zones, which is 80 for all three damage types and 30 for all elements, which is why you always see more damage on the training pole than the actual hunts. On Iceborne, Capcom introduces a new mechanic that everyone was very excited and glad to use this fully working mechanic which works always as intended. Here you can see the tenderizing formula which applies almost for every monster. If it changes, you will be able to see it on the specific monster. Diablo's legs have a 35 hit zone value which means they are not a weak spot and therefore weakness exploit doesn't work. So you want to tenderize them. You just paste the number and use a formula to see its hit zone after tenderizing. 
35 times 3 divided by 4 plus 25 is 26.25 plus 25, which is 51.25. Since this number is higher than 45, it means weakness exploit can take the effect, but you also tenderize a part and get that extra 50% affinity, but as well as 60 hit zone value increase, so you also get way more damage on them. This is why it's important to tenderize or help others in multiplayer hunts, but as well extend the clagger animations because I always see people say oh you don't like the clash club because it's complete garbage then just don't use it well you have to use it because else you deal no damage bro now if you understood this we can move to the elemental hits on values which is way easier to understand anything above 20 is very high and will allow you to get much elemental damage so Diablo's stomach is as well the best hits on for row and elemental damage but if you're a ranged player, you obviously want to shoot the wings. Here is the base flinch value, so if you want to know how much damage you have to do to flinch a monster, you multiply these numbers depending on the monster by 4.6 to 5.0, so you will basically need about 1000 damage on Diablo's legs to make him fall over. That's how speedrunners usually calculate their hunts. It's mostly scripted and not just doing whatever and the monster only falls over. That's how you chain up different CCs and can finish a fight without letting the monster to even move. Which is very efficient. I will not get into much detail for other numbers but this is how weak the monster is to status and this is basically how long traps or flashbots last. For more questions you can simply join our discord server which is linked down in the description. This number right here is really important since it's a nice overall damage increase. You see when Diablos is enraged he takes 10% more overall damage on top of everything. This is a reason why stickies do on some monster 150 damage and on others 170 damage. It's the only number that can increase or decrease explosive type of attacks. This includes impact files of course. So let's move now to a little more complicated monsters so you can see actually why Monster Hunter notes is so bad and won't tell you all these things. On the Hazak head we have a 65 hit zone value for 7 type attacks which is incredibly high. But only 15 on fire which is pretty low to say it's a good for elemental matchup. However you can see on dragon it's 0 and 0 means you're doing absolute 0 elemental damage because you know your damage is a hybrid of row and elemental, so the numbers you will see will be only row. So regardless if your weapon has a 100 dragon element or 1 million dragon element, you still will see exactly the same number hitting on its head. Here you can see the state of the parts. Breaking parts usually changes its zones. And Valhazak will take more row damage. A tiny bit more fire damage? But the dragon hit zone values jumps incredibly high and this means dragon weapons will do now a shitload of damage. Let's check Namiel which has also stupid changes. Assuming you're a charge block player and use elemental fire files, you will hit for super high damage with your files which will be around 370 on a good build if you hit the head. Because it has a 14 hit zone value and that's incredibly high. But once she dehydrates when she loses a color, and drops almost every single part to 5, you will now deal barely 40 damage per file, which is almost nothing. All the hits on values can be found on our server, or if you don't have Discord, you can visit the website Monsanto World Kiranico. There is so much more stuff to say about this topic, but this is all you need to know to be able to read the hits on values of the sheet on your own and decide for a better matchup. I hope you all enjoyed the video and find this guide helpful and if so be sure to leave a like and comment down below what you want to see next to also help me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome guides, builds and speedruns. With that said, I wish you all a nice day and happy hunting guys.